Look, you've been working out, you've been training, and your butt simply won't grow. It's not getting rounder. It's not getting bigger. In today's episode, we're going to talk about why it won't grow, but even better, we're going to tell you how to make it grow. I've never seen make Doug perk up so much. <laughs> <from this>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, about these, about, nice tell me about these ass gains, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> <That's laughs> <what I'm> about. <clears throat> no, this hey, is, actually, actually, this is uh, maybe um, <clears throat> top three when I think back to clientele uh, yeah. that, that <clears throat> hired me. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, um, I think we've discussed before that probably 65 to 70% of your clients, maybe more, were females. Mm-hmm. And majority of people want to lose weight, but m- most people also wanted to build their butt or they just wanted to build their butt yep. was probably the w- number one and number two <clears throat> things that I ever got hired for. This yeah. is also one of the goals that I felt extremely confident I could impact in a big way. Me too. Because, uh, it, you know, losing awesome. weight, yeah. losing weight, there's a lot of things you have to do with diet, can be quite challenging. Uh, it's hard to maintain because there's behaviors that have to really change or whatever. Building a butt was like, I, when someone came to me and said, I want to build a butt, I was like, okay, we can totally do this. This mm-hmm. is going to happen. In fact, I had a success rate of, I mean, 100% with this. Building building very easy, the adherence to what the steps in order to do that is what's challenging. Yeah. Well, because they also want to lose weight or like lose body fat at the same time. That's Yes. Well, the bottom line is the main reason why um, a lot of women struggle with building their butt is they simply, simply do not train eat or sleep to build forget butt just to build in general remember the butt is a muscle it's made up of the gluteus maximus minimus and medius okay so it's a, it's a muscle complex it is not fat like boobs or like other parts of the body where you have curves the butt is a muscle and if you want to build your butt you have to train sleep and eat in order to build and a lot of women have struggled with this because for so long the ways that they've been conditioned to train, eat, and live is to lose, is to lose. It's counterproductive Always to gaining- low calorie. Yeah. Yes, and it's it's very counterproductive to gaining any muscle at all. So that's what the big challenge is. Yeah, there's a hurdle there of trying to convince your female client that the approach that we're going to take towards your glutes is identical to the same approach that I took. I would take to, with the guy who comes to me and says, I want to get a huge chest. Huge what do chest, I need yeah. to do? Big arms. Yeah. yeah. yeah like I mean, that, besides the exercise focus, it's all right, identical. Right, right. Talking about different muscle groups, yes. right? Exercises are going to be different, but the approach, diet, recovery, volume, intensity, like exercise. Yep. I mean, yep. a lot of that stuff, that's all going to be the same. And so if you can just get, if you can help them shift their mindset from, <clears throat> you know, okay. And then also understanding too that, your your body is is always in one or one one phase or the other. It's either anabolic or it's catabolic. Right. And it, to lose body fat, to shrink your waist, to go down, right? To go down is is catabolic, and to build a butt is anabolic. And so these are two competing signals. Right. And so we have to make a commitment to one of them first. So if you're like the client that Justin's referring to, it says, Adam, I want to, I want to shrink my waist down or lose, you know, I want to lose 30 pounds. Yeah. I want to lose 20 to 30 pounds, but I also want to build a butt. What we have to agree upon is that, okay, we're going to focus on, on one of those primarily first. Uh, and uh, by the way, there's a, yeah. there's a better way to do that too. Exactly. One, there's a priority on, there. For there's, sure. And and so we're going to focus on one of those first and then we'll focus on the other one because trying to do that simultaneously, not that it's impossible, but you're going to see very little movement in each direction and it's going to take a lot longer. And that a lot of times can be. Yeah. By the way, what you were alluding to Adam, in terms of which one is better to start with, even if your goal is to lose weight, it's always better to start building. That's right. Because mm-hmm. of the metabolism boost and how that, that, um, that, that contributes to fat loss, whereas fat loss initially can typically results in a slowdown in metabolism as the body tries to adapt to the reduced calories, which makes it more difficult later on mm-hmm. to, to build muscle. So building is is uh, is typically where you want to start. But if you're if you're gaining in your butt, you're gaining. Yeah. So it's yeah, all but about wrap building. Your, yeah, wrap your brain around that for a second though, mm-hmm. because <clears throat> you're a you're a you know female client who comes in, who's been maybe yo-yo dieting for most of your life. You're struggling with 30 pounds overweight. You come in and you hire a trainer and you tell them that, Hey, I I really want to lose 30 pounds. I really want to build this butt. And you respond back to her. I'm going to put you on a, we're going to build and put you in a bowl. Yeah. I'm going to put you on a a calorie surplus and build and we're, and we're not going to cut and we're not going to lose weight right now. That's a really tough thing to overcome. And, 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 
<laughs> early on in my career when I didn't have the words to communicate like what we're doing, you know, that was really difficult to get buy-in from my client. Yep. And that's why what you said or when we started this was super easy formula, really difficult yeah. for the adherence Big part. barrier for psychologically yeah. for yeah. client coming in. It's yeah. also because <clears throat> when you're doing this right, your pants get tighter as your butt grows. Your legs right. will start to grow a little bit along with this. Scale to go up. Scale, listen, if you don't want to lose body fat, let's say you're listening to this right now and you're like, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm okay with my body fat percentage, you know, but I'd like to build my butt. You're going to gain weight then. If And that's, you got to be okay with that. So a lot of women who are okay with their body fat and want to build a butt also get discouraged when the scale goes up. It's like, listen, if you're okay with your body fat percentage and we're gaining muscle, that means you're going to gain some weight on the scale. You may go up three pounds on the scale, but if it's three pounds on your butt primarily, well, now you're going to get exactly what you're looking for. And of course, all the benefits that come along with that, which yeah. just includes faster metabolism, mobility, and all those other things. And, and of course, by the way, the, you know, muscular glutes uh, really signify health and mobility. This is why it's such a, this is why men and women both like this. Even women like this on a man as well, well-developed glutes, because I mean, uh, uh, we, we walk on two legs uh, of all the primates. This is how we walk. And we have very large glute muscles in comparison yeah. to other uh, primates because those muscles are responsible for balance and locomotion. And so powerful, strong glutes typically signifies good mobility, good strength, and good health. That's one of the reasons. Yeah, why. I always said it's like the, <clears throat> the the hips are the center of all of your power. Yes. I mean, this is, it's all derived from there. And, and uh, you know, and you're going to display that if you have like the large muscle support there uh, to signify that. Yeah, totally. Today's giveaway on YouTube is MAPS Anabolic. If you're interested and you want to enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. Now, this episode is brought to you by one of our sponsors, PRX Performance. This is home gym equipment that's as good or better than the stuff you see in the gyms, except it's designed to maximize space. For example, they have a squat rack that folds into the wall, literally comes off the wall less than six inches. And when you're ready to use it, you pull it out, boom, you have yourself a very sturdy squat rack. But they sell lots of other equipment and if you go through our link, you'll get yourself 5% off. By the way, they also have monthly payment plans. So it's like paying a gym membership, except you work out in your garage. Go check them out. Go to prxperformance.com forward slash mind pump. Also, this month's program sale, Maps Anywhere and Maps Hit, both 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. All right, so let's talk about the first um, thing you can do to really build your butt. Let's talk about training first. And uh, in our experience, typically the ideal frequency of how often you should train your glutes is about three days a week. Three days a week for most people works best. Now, you'll see people training their butt once a week. Some people are like, I'm going to do it every single day. Three days a week seems to be the right amount of frequency where you're training intensely. You're not training to failure, by the way, uh, meaning you're not doing an exercise till you can't do it anymore but you're going pretty hard. So you're stopping maybe two reps short of that, but you're training it three days a week. This gives you enough time to recover, repair, adapt, and then hit the muscle again. And so this would typically look like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, type of routine. And in our experience, this tends to lead to the fastest gains in, in the glutes. Yeah. I, it's hard yeah. to not talk about our second point while also talking about this point, because right. in my experience, the the women that were trying to build their glutes um, understood the frequency thing, but it was the exercise selection, the yeah. application of intensity that was really done improperly that resulted in no development. Yeah, because they're like, I'm working out my glutes three days right. a week. Mm -hmm. So I never, I rarely ever had a, a female client that um, didn't already attempt to to build her butt and didn't already have put some significant effort. Like Adam, I train it, you know, every other day and I do all these, I do all these exercises and I do these, you know, leg swings and glute kicks and jump boxes and like, yeah. you know, this plyometric movement. And they, so they have all these exercises that they've read in magazines or stuff like that. And they've applied that um, and they're not seeing the results. So I feel like the, obviously training three days a week, strength training, training to build, uh, but what you're doing in those three days, which is the second point, yeah. is it, it's impossible for me to talk about the first one without not 
really bringing the second well, one into the conversation. Before we get to the exercises, uh, let's talk real quick about what training to build looks like. Training to build does not look like circuits. It does not look like a class. It does not look like a hundred reps. Yeah. Training to build is like a traditional bodybuilder or strength athlete. Okay. What does that look like? You're doing 10 reps. It's intense. You did 10. You could maybe do 11 or 12, but you stop at 10. Don't go to failure. And then you rest for two to three minutes. That rest period, by the way, is what makes it muscle building and strength building. It's not the set that it's not the 10 reps that make it strength building. It's the rest. Because if I did 10 sets of an exercise, 10, uh, excuse me, 10 reps of an exercise, 10 reps of an exercise, 10 reps of an exercise with no rest, I've now, I'm now doing cardio with weights. I'm no longer doing strength training or muscle building. So you have to do the set and rest and the rest period is what makes it building. So you rest literally set your, and I have to tell a lot of women to do this, oh, yeah. look at the clock and do not do another set for two or three minutes because all of them, almost all of them want to go 20 seconds. I want to jump back in so I can feel the burn and sweat. No, no, no. You're not building. You have to rest for two to three minutes. You have to allow the ATP. This is a, a form of, of, of energy that fuels strength to rebuild so you could train the strength systems of the body because that's what leads to muscle growth. Otherwise, what you get is a bunch of stamina and endurance. And if you want to butt like a long distance runner, then don't do any rest. And what will end up happening is you'll have skinny muscles, no, no muscle at all. But if you want muscles like a sprinter, then you go hard and you rest for two or three minutes. Very, very important. Well, yeah, point. as far as we've come with education <clears throat> in terms of like weight training and how to build muscle, I mean, I, I feel like still the general consensus and the uh, what's popular now is uh, circuit-based, is cardio-based. Uh, I mean, you still see like stair masters with somebody on there doing a kickback in between. Thinking, thinking that, it's that butt. this yeah. is, but I am working my butt and I am, you know, doing these things or they'll do like, uh, squatted jumps where they're just kind of going at like a quarter squat on the way down. Mm. And then, so range of motion isn't even being achieved. And so I think that there's, you know, there's a lot more to kind of peer into in terms of like what an actual weight training uh, scheduled out workout looks like. Well, a lot of that uh, coincides with mindset, with the approach to the workouts. So you both have alluded to one of the biggest mistakes, which is this chasing a burn, chasing a sweat, yes. right? Chasing fatigue, like in with this exercise, like, oh, I'm ready. I did my, I did my, you know, 10 lunges and I'm, I'm ready to go. I can do, I can do more. Let me add some kickbacks or leg swings in there or something like that because I can do more because I can burn. I can keep going and thinking because the butt is burning and because it's working more, shouldn't I get more muscle yeah. that way? Mm -hmm. And that's the wrong mindset. The right mindset is give myself lots of rest because what I'd like to try on the next set I'm going to see if I can increase the weight. Yes. Let's see if I can put even more weight on the bar or add even heavier dumbbells so I can push more weight. And That's can, what builds. And that, and so it's, it's a, it's a strength focused mindset, not a burn, lots of move, lots of sweat type of mindset. That's really hard to get that client many times to make that shift and understand that there are different signals that you're sending to the body. And yes. one of them is going to is going to give you this great adaptation towards stamina and energy and that's great if that was your desired outcome but it's not your desired outcome is to build an ass if you want to build an ass then we got to get strong you need to build that muscle to move a lot of weight therefore in between sets i'm thinking I'm going to rest. Oh, I could go right now, but you know what? If I let rest a little bit longer, I could probably add even more weight to the bar and adding more weight to the bar right. is what's going to build now, those glutes. Now the counter is often, but I feel my butt burn so much when I do five exercises in a row or I do the Stairmaster and, and, and it gets sore. It gets mm -hmm. so sore the next day. I surely should be building muscle. You're, you're still working the glutes, but you're training different muscle fibers. You're training muscle fibers that are good for endurance and stamina. They use a different energy system. And in order to improve their performance with energy, with stamina, they improve their energy, how they use energy. They do not get bigger. Bigger muscles don't have more endurance. Muscles that utilize energy differently have more endurance. Bigger muscles move heavier weight. So if you want to build, you have to train for strength, not for stamina and not for endurance. I use the example of a long distance runner or a sprinter. A sprinter is essentially doing strength training versus uh, a type That's of running. Anaerobic. They're doing a 50 yard or 100 yard dash as fast as they can, and they rest for a while. That is like weight training versus a distance runner who's running 15 to 20 miles. Well, that's stamina. And you look at the two, compare the two. What does a sprinter look like versus what does a distance runner look like? So if you want to build, you do a set, you rest for two or three minutes, 
you do another set, you rest for two or three minutes. You do not combine five or six exercises together. You do not do 50,000 reps to try to make a burn. You're trying to get stronger. And if you're getting stronger, you're building. In other words, if you could do, if you could do a couple more reps or you add five pounds to the bar, guess what? You're moving in the right, in the right direction. Right, right. All right. So the next point, which is what you were talking about, Adam, is the exercises. And the reason why I say that this coincides with one and why it's so important and why it's hard to talk about is because first we kind of address the mindset, but now it, it even matters the exercise selection. Because if you're doing things like kickbacks and dog pees and leg swings and ice skaters, you know, three times a week, that's great. You're doing all this frequency, but you're doing these these exercises that are they not- They just don't build a lot of muscle. They they're just not don't, as effective. No, they're not as effective at building muscle. So yes, the three days a week is important, but even more so what's important is, or equally important, yes. is the exercise selection. Think, yeah, all, all strength training exercises build muscle and strength, but they don't all build the same they're amount. Not all create, they're all not created equal. They're not. So think of it this way. You're trying to dig a hole, trying to dig a big hole. You have a spoon, a shovel, and a backhoe. The exercises that we're about to list are the backhoe. Now, all the other ones that Adam just talked about, the kickbacks and all that stuff, that's a spoon. So you're going to dig a little bit of a hole, right? But you're not going to make a big impact. So what are these big exercises that build a lot of muscle? Well, here they are. Squats, hip thrusts, and deadlift, and deadlift variations. Those are the three main exercise types you should focus on. So if you're training your butt three days a week, then you one day you should focus on squats. The next time you should focus on hip thrusts. And then the next time you should focus on deadlifts. Those exercises, those three exercises right there will build more butt muscle than the next 10 exercises combined. That's how effective they are. And they're so effective. And I'm so glad that you narrowed it down to these three mm -hmm. and maybe including the variations of those threes because someone's going, oh, what, what about a step up? What about a lunge? What about a Bulgarian split squat? What about, there's a lot of other movements. Yeah. that incorporate the glutes. But when I have a client who wants to build their butt, I am not going to overcomplicate the programming and teach them every butt exercise. I'm going to teach them the three biggest ones that are going to really put the, and get them strong yes. and good at those movements. And there's a reason why that's so important because if this week she does those three movements and then next week she does step ups and side lunges yeah, no. and like these other ones, which are good butt mo movements, you did not allow yourself to get good at those other three movements to add more weight to the bar, which the adding more weight to the bar and getting good at those previous three movements are going to give you more return on glute size than doing more new unique exercises for your glutes. Listen, you double the weight you can do in a squat, hip thrust, and deadlift, and you will see your butt grow, mm -hmm. period, end of story. Those, are, those, those, those build, get strong at squats, get strong at hip thrusts, get strong on deadlifts. Do each of them one day a week. In other words, squat Monday, hip thrust Wednesday, deadlifts on Friday. Get stronger every single week, yeah. and your butt will grow. The, That's just period. Th these the are the ones that you can load the bar substantially <clears throat> with. And, and the other variations you even mentioned are all just subsets of these three exercises. That's right. So your hip hinging or your <clears throat> squat. That's really what it boils down to. And why not do that by just you know, something like by loaded, that's very much just focused on adding more weight to the bar. What I also like about these three in particular is even though you still have to somewhat modify intensity on those three days, the, the hip thrusting gives your body a little bit of rest from like your squat. That's why it's ordered that way. And yeah. so you can set it up in this manner. Yeah, Monday, you, Wednesday, Friday. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So and you can pretty much get after those three lifts. Totally. And your body's okay. Now, if you did, you know, uh, sumo squats one day, front squats another day, and, you know, barbell back squats no. another day, that's very taxing. I'm glad you said that. We mm -hmm. picked these three exercises and we put them in this order specifically because this is what good programming looks like. This order, this combination is the best order and combination of three days a week that you're going to get for your glutes for most people. Yes. And the next point, uh, and people are going to think, what does this have to do with anything? It's very important. Try to sleep a consistent nine hours every single night. Sleep has a profound impact on your body's ability to get stronger and build muscle. Now I say nine hours, and everybody says eight hours, but I say nine hours because in my experience, when I had clients focus on mm. getting nine hours of quality sleep, they all at least got seven and a half to eight hours of sleep. Yeah. It just seemed to work out that it's way. It's like shoot for it. So yes. That way, yeah. yeah. So go to bed and then wake up nine hours later. Make that a priority. The, by the way, the studies on this are ridiculous. Like there's one study that I've quoted on the show. This had to do with weight loss, but nonetheless, it was pretty remarkable. It controlled study too, where they had two groups of people 
in the same calorie deficit, both lost the same amount of weight. The group that got bad sleep lost half is tw- uh, sorry, 50% more muscle than the other group did. So the amount of muscle you can build with good sleep versus not that good of sleep is profound. So you have to, if you want to build, you got to prioritize, you got to prioritize. Well, and this is every single night. The, the other part you have to communicate though, with that process. And this was another like thing that you had to educate your clients on when it came to what exactly are we doing when we're trying to build and everybody thinks that when you go in the gym and you do exercises in there is that you're you're building muscle and you're not there we're we're breaking down in there we're sending a signal to that's your, the stress for your, for your yeah. body that that's the stressor that's we're sending a signal for the body to adapt the adaptation process the recovery and the adapting to it happens in your sleep and so and when you're resting right so over over after the gym and so if you don't prioritize that you're going to limit the the results that you're going to get. And so it becomes equally important, like how we exercise, how we feed the body, and then how we recover and we rest. And if you neglect that, you could be doing all the right exercises, but if you're if you are not sleeping and you're not giving yourself adequate recovery and or fueling the body properly, you're not going to get the return. You're I'll, not going to get the return on your investment. Your wheels, I'll yeah. say this right now. A bad workout with good sleep will give you better better results than a good workout with poor sleep. That's how big of an impact sleep will make on your body's ability to adapt and build muscle. So this is very, very important. I've had clients gain and lose weight just from changing their sleep, not changing anything else, just getting to to fix their sleep. And depending on what their goal was, all of a sudden things started moving in the right direction because we fixed this process. And building is, this is very important for building. So try and aim for nine hours of sleep every single night. This will propel your body's ability to build muscle so, so fast. Um, the next one is to change the reps. Now, the, the muscle building reps, uh, we could say would fall in the range of anywhere between, let's say, three to 20 reps. Let's play within those. That, those, those that, that's a nice range that you can play within. So when we say change the reps, you should focus on a particular rep range for a certain period of time. So, okay, for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to try and train at six reps real low. And then the next few weeks, I'm going to try and train in the 10 rep range. Uh, for a little while. This is important because changing the the target of the reps changes the stimulus and keeps things novel, even though you're doing the same exercises and it tends to keep the body uh, progressing. It tends to avoid plateaus. Yeah. I, I think um, here's an example of where, um, you know, that that's like a, a generic answer, right? Of like, just do those things and, and you'll be right. fine. Uh, a more individualized or more specific to the this average client to me I'm going to almost always focus in the low rep range to start this client out because normally this client is the client that likes to superset circuit F45 never orange, just the majority of our orange experience. theory, yeah. short rest periods. And rarely ever did this client come to me and she goes, Oh yeah, no, I've been powerlifting for a really long time or, Oh yeah, I, I give three minute rest periods and I train singles. And I never had a powerlifting yeah. client who couldn't grow her. Butt. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So yeah. because of that, they already did that. And, 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 and that doesn't mean your the rules that you said don't apply because I, it's still the same rules, right? You're going to fo- focus on a, a rep range for a, a period of time, three to four weeks. Then you're going to move out of that rep range for another three to four weeks and then move out of that rep range three to four weeks. But I can almost a hundred percent be certain to push that person in the low rep range first mm-hmm. because yeah, you're right. that signal uh, that you're going to send is so novel to that uh, avatar. That avatar probably has never trained in the three to five rep range. It's probably never done well, that. Well, this falls with the first two uh, things points we brought up even earlier with like the exercise selection. Like, cause even then like just focusing on loading the bar and then having those adequate rest periods, um, that that's a big hurdle, you know, for that type of a client and then to structure it in a way, you know, where, where now we're, we're, we're doing less reps and they're very much more intentional. And then it, it promotes that kind of rest period where this is what actual strength training looks like. It feels like, yeah, you're right. yeah, uh, good point. It, it, it for sure is going to be Sets the stage. new. It's a, it's a totally new stimulus. And what's really, and this part is the part that I always love communicating to the, my client that's like this is that. What's very exciting about this is that if you do fall into that category that I'm saying that tend to gravitate towards those classes, do circuit training, do plyometric exercises, do low rest periods like everybody tends to do for that is trying to obtain these goals, me getting you to train this way, the gains come on so fast. You know, that was my formula. That was my guaranteed formula for someone who needed to build their butt. 
three days a week, squats, hip uh, hip thrust, deadlifts, right out and of the gates low reps, yeah. and low reps. It was like, this was my 100% almost every time. And so, you know, even though you might have the client fearful of this new way of training or approaching uh, lifting and dieting this way, if you can get them to trust the process and they actually go all in on this, the gains will come fast, fast and good and strong. And, and you'll see incredible results right out the gates because of how novel it is. So yeah. that's the part that I would get clients excited about is that, listen, you've never trained this way before. And I, and, and I know that sounds so counter to what you've probably been marketed to or been told before, but if you trust me, yeah. like I'm going to show you results like in weeks time, because you've never trained that way totally, before. 100%. And the last point, and this is an important one. We left it last, not because it's least important, uh, but we need to make this point, and that is that you got to eat more. So you cannot build in a calorie deficit. You have to have a surplus of energy, a surplus of calories for your body to pull from to create new tissue. Uh, in this case, it's muscle. So however much you're eating now, bump your calories up. And there's a there's a little subtitle here, which is, eat high protein. Okay. Protein is what gets turned into muscle. Now, uh, more calories from carbohydrates and fats can also help fuel muscle growth. But if you're not eating roughly one gram of protein per pound of target body weight, then you're not going to be building as much muscle um, as you possibly can. So eat more, bump your calories, but also make sure you're eating about a gram of protein per pound of target body weight. That is the formula for building. Well, this is what determines, okay, when, when we first started this conversation, <clears throat> You see, your your body is one or the other. It is either catabolic mm -hmm. or anabolic. the The amount of calories that you intake determines that. If you are under your maintenance, you are catabolic. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you do all the best exercise in the world, get all kinds of great sleep. Your body will be catabolic if you're in a caloric deficit, and if that is completely <laughs> the opposite of what you want, if you're trying to build a butt. So we have to be in some, it doesn't have to be a massive surplus. I'm not asking you to go bulk with a bunch of extra cal, but you need to be above maintenance in yeah. a surplus. A few, three, yeah. 400 calories above maintenance. Yes. Would be plenty. And hitting that, those protein targets. But then that then puts you in an anabolic position. And now we are in a, we are priming the body to build tissue, to build muscle, to build the butt. And so that'll be, and, th and then this is the, the, the biggest challenge is you come in I want to lose 30 pounds, Adam, but I also want to build my butt. Um, and I tell you, like, listen, we're going to we're gonna lift heavy-ass weight, and then I want you to eat a little bit more than yeah. what we're doing. The psychological part uh, and hurdle is the most challenging. But again, if that is a novel stimulus, like I'm pretty sure it will be for most of the people, you'll see very positive benefits uh, as far as the gains pretty fast. And what comes also with the building the butt, building the muscle is the faster metabolism, right. which will only- It makes the fat loss way easier. It's only going to set you up for the shrinking the waist and losing the body fat much better and That's much right. easier and a lot easier for you to sustain. Yeah, and I don't say this very often, but you know, so long as you're healthy and there's no other crazy lifestyle factors or nutrient deficiencies or whatever, like if you follow this formula, you will build your butt. You will see results with your butt. Uh, growth. Look, if you love the show, we also have a free guide to help you build your butt. It goes into what we just talked about and more, and it's totally free. It's a build your butt guide. Again, it's free. It's at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find us all on social media. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram at mindpumpmedia, and Adam's on Instagram at mindpumpadam. 